Hello everyone, my name is Jean and I'm announcing that my book, Beyond Dreaming, is now free to download. The links for the PDF or ebook versions are down in the description below if you would like to read it. Of course, my books are still for sale on Amazon and I still do recommend that if you want to connect to the book in a deeper way, or any book for that matter, then it's better to actually get the physical paperback copy. But nonetheless, I want it to be accessible to everyone, so here you go, in a digital version. And on top of this, all of my future books will also be free for digital download too. As most of you know, all of the work I've done over the past year was primarily to put all of this knowledge and resources out there, but of course it can be tricky to do that when we're so busy in life with work and responsibilities, etc. So this video is also just a huge thank you to all of you subscribers, Patreons, and anyone who just left a like or comment really, as it's all helped me to come to this point where I can offer things for free and really do my main passion or mission which is to share all of this freely without restrictions and the fact that we're almost at 100,000 subscribers now is crazy considering I only started this channel a year ago. So yeah, it's really important to me that as I devote to this work that it should also be free too. Humanity is at a point where we need more real priceless, accessible wisdom instead of another non-promising subscription fee from some commercialized type of spirituality. But anyway, that's all debatable and just my personal feelings. But my point is, awakening is freely available within you. And so it should also be free outside of us too. And it is just so much better that way for many reasons. So yes, thank you to everyone for making this possible. And my future books will also be freely available such as the one I'm currently writing called The Fire of Inner Revolution. I will also be releasing one based on the Chakra series called Seven Cosmic Rays. And I'll also be doing audiobooks for all of those. On top of this, I'm also planning a free 33-week Gnostic course. I'm currently planning the lectures and I'll be opening an in-person group here in Edmonton in Canada. So if you're in Edmonton, just leave a comment below. I know I've already bumped into a couple of you here in person. Um, and then I'll put you on my mailing list and let you know uh, when, when that begins. After some time of doing that in person, I'll also then do a public series of lectures uh, for everyone online. I'll do it on Zoom. Um, I'll make a video about it when the time comes, maybe early next year. So just turn the bell notification on so you keep up to date with it all. And since I'm giving my book away, I also wanted to dedicate just a bit of time here giving you my reasonings and motivations for writing this book. And synchronistically, I received feedback from a couple of friends recently who read the book. And I'm just going to use some of their main points or key things that they found valuable. I'll quote them on the screen, but just before I do, I'll give you the main motivations which led me to writing this book in the first place. So I had been on this path of self-discovery for about 10 years at the time, and naturally my experiences and practices included astral projection. Now, astral projection or out-of-body experiences is not just a developed talent or hobby, but in each and every one of us, astral projection is a core aspect of the process of awakening. This is what I've learned and this is what I know to be true. And so it was to my disappointment that this piece of advice of that astral projection is a core part of our awakening, I was, you know, disappointed that this piece of advice is something that you just won't hear from most people or many spiritual systems or schools. And I really passionately emphasize that if you want to awaken, develop and transform your consciousness, you just have to start taking advantage of one of the most powerful tools within yourself, which is what we call astral projection. But call it whatever you want. What matters is understanding and experiencing the fact that at night, when we sleep, our consciousness enters into powerful, alternative and transcendental states of awareness, which can be used for self-realization in the most life-changing of ways, in ways that 
elicit your deepest emotions and the whole galaxy of your own subconscious world, which is a vast and deep rabbit hole of mysteries. So this is what I know to be true, that astral projection is extremely valuable to everyone in an extremely positive way. But when I found the astral projection subreddit group, which had about 200,000 members at the time, I wasn't just disappointed in the fact that there wasn't a lot of positive and grounded astral projection advice and knowledge. But what was worse was that there seemed to be a whole lot of excessive fear-mongering, skeptical confusions, arguments, paranoia, superstition, you name it. You know, our imaginations are just wild and it's sad how something so miraculous and life-affirming can be totally tainted by just a few words of superstitious fear or religious fanaticism. If I personally had that kind of negative exposure when I when I was first learning about all of this and astral projection, I'm sure it would have been a lot harder for me to progress and to actually start having experiences. So yes, it was this astral projection Reddit group which motivated me to shed light on more proper and upright ways to approach and think about astral projection with much more strength, trust, intelligence, and with a much deeper sense of spiritual purpose as a human being. Now, of course, please don't come at me, Redditors. I'm not hating on the Astral Projection Reddit group. I'm a moderator there now, and I support it fully. And of course, the stream of constant confused uh, questions that come up on there isn't Reddit's fault or the group's fault or anything. It's just, you know, today it has 266,000 members. And at that number, it really just reflects humanity's chaotic state of awareness when it comes to this idea of leaving our body and exploring different territories of our consciousness. So this is what led me to write this book, because I really wanted people to understand that these journeys beyond the body and into these other worlds is a beautiful and transcendental experience which totally widens and expands your understanding and perception of reality in a very personal and wholesome way. And later down the line, it can really show you what the reality of the word God really is, or at least start to feel or intuit how the mind of God works, or in other words, just how the mind of nature works, right? Nature being this whole uh, intelligent, multidimensional uh, consciousness reality that we live in, and how this divinity of intelligence moves through the dimensions of experience that we all are intimately tied to in the depths of our consciousness. So, this book is great for everyone, but I would say it's especially effective for those who have fallen into the many intellectual traps that are set up for us when we first learn about astral projection. It's for those who, because of one reason or another, you weren't guided properly through those fears, those doubts, confusions, obsessions, superstitions, etc. My intention for the book was to go right to the heart of what it really means to have this experience. And hopefully, if you can start to understand that, you will then honor this aspect of experience with much more intuition and will be able to independently start to move forward in a way that helps you evolve spiritually with the knowledge of this deep and latent uh, skill, this ability that we all have to commune and converse with these deeper and different parts and levels of our being. So I'm going to show you some quotes from feedback that I got on the book recently, just to highlight some of the main messages from it. These aren't the only main messages. Uh, it's a decently sized book with a lot of step-by-step -step practices in it, but here you go. So the first one is, your core teaching of this book is, if you are conscious while awake, then you'll be conscious while asleep. 
This leads the reader to spend less time craving or dreaming about astral projection experiences and instead actually focus on awakening their consciousness here and now and welcome all the natural benefits that arise from that. So yes, this is a main teaching in the book, that actually astral projection is a tool for awakening consciousness. That means it's not just limited to practicing it at night when you're asleep, but instead you learn how to get into the habit of shifting your awareness in waking life. Because if you do that, if you become more conscious in the present moment more and more in waking life, that habit will sink down deeper and deeper into your subconscious mind and you'll start being more consciously present while asleep too. And you'll find yourself in these other worlds that you didn't know you visited at night and which program and influence your conscious mind uh, during the day too. This is why it's so important to explore our realms of consciousness, our subconscious realms of consciousness because they are the building blocks, the subconscious building blocks for how we think, feel, and know things in our experience. Okay, so another one is, I appreciate your interactive way to encourage the reader to ask themselves questions such as, when was the last time you appreciated the things around you? This gives the reader the practical possibility to self-reflect and practice while reading. So yes, this book is not meant for purely intellectual consumption, but it's meant to be directed at the part of our awareness which is able to contemplate and reflect deeper on realizing, in this moment, our multidimensional nature of reality. And we should read like this, in a meditative way, in order to shift our awareness into other non-ordinary dimensions or states of consciousness. Reading and practicing in this way will give you much more success. That's the great thing about spiritual books, I find. It's not just, you know, like reading a newspaper. You actually get the opportunity to meditate and read at the same time. So, for example, another part of the book says the following about when we're developing spiritually and start having experiences, but then we ruin it through our own desperation, you could say. Often, when one finds new and profound states of being in meditation, we become overwhelmed with this new type of bliss and rejoice in it. It is great to enjoy it, but do not spoil it with attachment. Instead, honor it and let it be there for as long as it lasts. It's like trying to lure stray cats into your home. To do this, the blossoming of your consciousness opens the doors to your house and it manifests food and catnip to attract them. But if you start to try and catch them and force them to love you, then they'll just run away. So this points to when we try to desperately grab onto an experience or hold onto something that we're uh, experiencing, then it's usually taken away or we lose it because we become we become clumsy in our desperation. Remember I said that astral projection is life-affirming. It's a beautiful process. It's not something that happens out of fear or confusion or desperation and, and being desperate for all of these experiences. Actually, it only really happens when we're ready for those experiences, when we lay the foundation for new and more observant and detached states of being. So the book also emphasizes how this isn't just some optional hobby, but that it's an integral part of our self-discovery. So as it says here, when we speak about out-of-body experiences, we are not talking about some separate or man-made experience. We are dealing with life itself, not some strange phenomena that only a few experience. It is inherent to all of us, but most of us just aren't conscious of it. This is why we have to address our lives and not just astral projection as some sort of separate hobby or casual interest. It is a wholesome practice that affects us positively and profoundly on every level of our being. Observe any Kung Fu master. He does not just partake in his martial arts every now and then just for fun. No, he takes it seriously and he lives his life through the philosophy his martial arts teaches. Just as much as when he is fighting, he grows and builds his character as a result. 
And there's a lot of other grounding advice, such as when people get overwhelmed with feeling that they don't know or they're afraid of the unknown, and then they start having this mental hesitation which starts blocking experiences. So, for example, here it says, you'll eventually begin to be comfortable with not knowing. And only then will the answers and the experiences begin to flow. The realization of one's ignorance is the beginning of authentic self-knowledge. So you see, a lot of people approach astral projection with this kind of fear of the unknown. And then when they let that go, they start to have experiences. They start to have answers. Or maybe they have one experience and then they start asking so many questions and they get overwhelmed but instead if they were just comfortable with not knowing all the answers then they can start to get answers through experiences and you know this is uh, the main way uh, that we want to proceed this is how i proceed uh, in life in general if i don't understand something or i don't know something that's okay but through astral projection, say before I go to sleep, I ask my higher self, you could say, to teach me something. And then at night, I have the astral projection experience. And I wake up and reflect on, you know, how this all relates to what I asked. And sometimes it can be really specific. Sometimes it can be uh, very mystical. But the important thing is that me, myself, I have felt and I always do feel that when I do that, I am learning all of this uh, knowledge and experience on a much different or say out of world level of my being. And that leaves a lasting impression on my particular personal path. And it can for everyone else too. I've had many experiences in the past that I am still figuring out in my own way and still learning from as well. Okay, and about the book recommendations I put at the back, keep in mind that I wrote this book for a particular type of audience, as I've been describing here. And so the recommendations I've given are meant to serve as just credible introductions to go down other routes of exploring related topics. I don't personally consider any of these books as perfect or to be taken as some kind of uh, ultimate guide or truth, but they certainly did help me personally along the path to get acquainted with certain new ideas. So I want to keep this video short uh, for everyone who decides to download and read the book. I really hope you enjoy it and feel free to leave comments on this video if you have questions while you read. And I'll remember to come back to this video every now and then and answer your questions. Good luck. I hope you find what you're looking for and remember to enjoy the process no matter what happens.